Paul, uh, obviously you, you work for one of these digital services. Pandora uh, is active in the United States. Um, it, it hasn't launched in Europe. Um, how do you find the economics of that as a, as a, as a company? It, obviously you want to pay artists, presumably you want to make sure they get their money, but how do you balance that with, with building your businesses? Pandora's got 50 odd artists working in the company, it was founded by an artist, so it's very much at the heart of what the service is about. So from pretty much day one, um, we were paying um, a rate to Sound Exchange. Um, it's well known the rate went up and we've been, um, amongst other services, fighting the, the level of rate. So it's old news, but, but the actual structure works. So as far as we know, um, we're paying quarterly amounts of money over um, and we're making money as a service, we're turning over money. Um, we have been, we've been trying hard to do that from the beginning. So of several million dollars uh, a year, several million dollars are being paid to Sand Exchange. So trying to give practical advice is if you're a manager or an artist, make sure you are registered at Sound Exchange um, because hopefully you'll get paid. They brought on a very smart guy, Brian Calhoun, to run New Media and Artist Relations. So from Pandora's perspective, you you know, go see him, find his email, find his contact details. They're trying to get all the artists in there because we hope the money we're paying Sand Exchange is being paid out uh, and being claimed. And one key point about Sand Exchange, as with PPL, is 50% of the monies we pay are attributable to the performers themselves. So that gets paid out to the performers, not to the, uh, you know, copyright owner. Um, and the other 50, if, if, if indeed the, it's the label that owns the copyright, uh, and the other 50% then goes to the copyright owner. So then it goes generally to the record company. So we feel that that structure kind of works. Um, it's just about the level of, of royalty, but that's a you know, bigger debate. Peter, you are actually are getting your hands on some money uh, and hopefully distributing it as well. Um, how, how much money are you seeing coming through for, for the people you work for? We found in the UK now that um, probably something in the order of two to three percent of our of our collections now would be uh, a sort of a digital income. Um, it's uh, it's an interesting uh, area there where a lot of the discussions are around obviously digital being the future and uh, and digital being where the money is. Uh, funny enough, in our world of traditionally licensing secondary income, actually there is still really good growth in things like the public performance, which is going up around the country, licensing bars, shops, offices, factories to play music. And there's still very good growth in actually going around the world and, uh, and collecting for performers for their uses around the, around the world. So actually the percentage for digital hasn't grown as much as it might have done because of the other growth in the other areas. And so, but, but generally we've actually seen that money. And, um, and I think that uh, you get into the, uh, the boring area of data and about where is the money. And it's really about making sure that as a performer or as a manager, you're absolutely engaging with, with companies like PPL to make sure that you're getting the right data about your performer's performances. And if you own the, the so-called master rights then making sure you record the, uh, you sort of register those as well and then the money will start to flow through if you if you get that right uh, Terry uh, your former cl client Avril Levine famously earned uh, a million pounds from YouTube for the girlfriend video and that was back when one million pounds was enough to buy a round of drinks on the croisette um, so it was worth having um, but I mean how do you manage to stay on top of all the all these potential digital revenue streams as, as, as a manager well, I think what's, um, I mean, net Network's in a very unique situation because we, we're also a record label, we're also a publisher, and we're also a manager. So we're able to, you know, we do our own deals. So we're, we're able to see how those, how those deals work, the mechanisms, the actual flow of income. So when those revenues don't show up on our artist statements, we can walk in and go, well, hang on, if we're getting this statement and this flow of money is coming in, in the case of YouTube, um, how come our artists aren't? In the case of YouTube, I mean, it was just walking into the, to the label and going, hey, we know a couple of years ago, you guys got an advance a couple of years ago on past royalties and advance on future ro uh, ro royalties. My artist at that, that time had over 100 million views on one video. I'm like, how come it's never shown up on the royalty statement? He says, this is my royalty statement. It shows it, it shows it right here. And I'm getting paid monthly. So we've been able to use that knowledge. And our artists are seeing a very good return right now upon their, upon their digital income, but only because we've been able to see both sides. You know, streaming, they, they, they held on to that money, the majors, for the better part of three years. Till I walked in, I remember a fascinating meeting, sitting in with the, with, with the head of the label, not corporate, the head of the label, and going, this is what a Rhapsody statement looks like. And I actually pulled it up. And said, look at all this income. I said, and he's like, he'd never seen one. 
The money had gone to corporate and was sitting in corporate, had never made it down to the labels to make it onto the royalty statements. So it's with that knowledge, it's out there. A lot of money has been generated. Um, certain players have been doing a very good job of holding on to it. And as a manager, I, I hopefully do a very good job of finding it. <laughs> well, sounds like it's working out all right. But uh, I mean, what do, what do managers need to do? Do they, do they need to work together, share the knowledge so that this kind of stuff is, uh, you know, that is available to everybody? Carl, is that what the MMF would like to see? No, I absolutely. Mean? That's, that's uh, one of the key issues. Uh, education and, and internal education, uh, trying to uh, uh, get a network um, within the uh, International Music Managers Forum where you, we can discuss these things, absolutely. Um, and, and it's vital and it's changing so fast, new income streams all the time. We are in, sometimes in a very difficult situation where a service is, is, is having a deal and we don't know about those terms in that deal, etc. Um, I, I, I've managed to, uh, I've come so far, I, I, I know the terms now with my artists, what, what deal uh, the, the record company have with the services. Uh, but those are only a fraction of the services that is actually out there. The, the, challenge, the challenge, I think, is that for Terry, for my firm with respect to certain of our clients, um, for you know, other superstar, right now, What's happening is these problems are being corrected at the one-on-one -on -one level. In other words, you know, we've gone in and gotten an enormous amount of money for certain of our clients, either in the context of a renegotiation, in the context of an audit, in the context of you know, literally chasing down the money. Because there's a real cat and mouse game that's going on right now where the money is going to sit in corporate. I mean, no one ha seems to have any ethical dilemma with letting the money sit and not volunteering it unless it's specifically asked for. And it's almost like one of these ridiculous games where you have to ask the question in exactly the right way or nobody's going to answer the question. And so the challenge right now is how does that affect an artist who can't otherwise justify the cost of an audit or who can't otherwise, you know, there's just going, just knowing that the money might be out there isn't, a, in most cases, I don't know, I don't know how everybody else is, is situated, but in most cases, an artist can't afford to hire someone and pay them on an hourly basis, certainly, to conduct an audit. And so there are a number of agencies that have sort of sprung up that are volunteering to chase after these monies, right? Or that suggest that they can get these monies. But those deals are typically on spec, and you have to know, are these people any good, right? And then what percentage is it fair for them to expect to take? Um, so we, we are in the earliest stages of a process um, and hopefully most of these companies will still be in business and the money will still be there when someone you know, has the wherewithal to figure out how to chase after it.